All right, uh, here we are, part two after show. I'm laughing. I'll explain why I'm laughing in just a moment. Uh, if you didn't catch it, make sure to check out part one. I got Mr. Bronel Richards from so many different brands. Bronel Richards, uh, LLC. We got business in Berman. He's got his new book coming out in November, depending on when you catch this, which is Shut the Hell Up and Sell, which I can't wait to check that out. Bronel, welcome to the after show. Welcome to part two. Uh, welcome to the Authentic Persuasion Show. Thank you, sir. You know, um, the business and bourbon guy always loves a good after show. After party. There we go. So, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a BYOB thing, so I'll let you handle that on your end. But uh, So the reason why I was laughing as soon as I hit record is because uh, Ronell here asked me, um, how long is the after show going to be? And I looked down at the clock and I said 13 minutes because that's how long we have in our, our time block here to schedule. And he starts laughing because I think he was expecting me to say like 15 to 20 and I'm going to try to stretch it. And he's a busy guy and, and, and I'm a busy guy on the calendar. And uh, he starts laughing and I'm laughing because because that's the answer, which kind of segues perfectly, like I said, into the busyness part. When you and I jumped on before we even hit record, we are talking about like the, the current mode you're in, which is focusing on the business instead of in the business. Um, for business owners, leaders out there, even sometimes salespeople, where it's important to take that kind of strategic step back. Um, how do you actually make that happen? Or what are you learning about using that space for yourself that you know people at any level can take from from what you're going through right now in that mm. mode yeah you know um i think that a lot of you know type a's and sellers and leaders out there like we we're all about that action that's one that's one of the things i've always kind of prided myself once i don't i don't talk about it i am about it right i'm gonna <laughs> do it um and so which has been great, but the the downside to that is you're you, you're in a constant loop of action and working in the business. And um, for for those of us that you know that are fun, founders and entrepreneurs and things, you're just so busy with the activities that you you, you have a. It's difficult for you to step outside and actually work on the strategic vision. Work on actually growing your business. And those of us that are consultants and coaches out there, like, you know, we're, we're some of the, we're, they're, we're the worst. It's like doctors make the, <laughs> the worst patients, right? Like it's, it's, yep. it's a challenge oh, yeah. for us. So like for me, um, I've literally had to, um, cut social off, um, and, um, and take about a week, you know, we just finished a big show, big event for our company in Dallas uh, a week ago, two weeks, is it a week and a half? Yeah, a week ago, a week and a half ago. And it took me a week just to start to come down, meaning that, okay, I'm okay with the inactivity because the minute that I get back, I'm like, okay, I got to go. This, all right, what's next? All right, I need to do something. You know, I'm, not doing, I'm not doing something, I'm freaking out. And so now, a week and a half into it, I'm kind of cool. I'm like chill. So, I, so my advice first, first of all, would be like, hey, know that it's just like um, coming down off of something. <laughs> Whether we'll just say like caffeine, right? Like you're hype. Ah, <laughs> you gotta allow yourself the time to like, okay, chill, relax, and remove anything that's going to take you um, or bring you back into that like frenetic pace. So that may be social media, it may be. Um, your your employees, your colleagues, hey, like kind of letting them know, letting, letting the people around you know what mode you're in and what it is you're trying to do now so they can help support your efforts. Um, and then just your own personal discipline, your own discipline to be like, okay, I'm this thing I'm not going to do right now. Because here's the thing, most of the things that we think are so important, they're not that important. They're really not, man. And they can wait. Yeah. They, they really can. And so this working on the business um, or sort of time is, is, is just so important. It's so important and it's so special because we don't get much of it. Think about it. Like if you're spending like me or, or probably you, Jason, we're like 90% of the time, 98% of the time working in the business. So if only 2% of the time is that man, that's precious. And so we have to respect it and, and hold ourselves accountable for making sure it happens and keeping the discipline around it. I, I love it. And that mode is difficult, especially for 
uh, people in the in the businesses that we do, right? Where it's not just running an enterprise, it's doing the things that we do as well. Uh, and I think this can apply to anybody, right? Obviously, there's business owners, there's business leaders. If you're an executive at a company, you know, it feels like you can never stop to take a step back and be strategic, but you really need to budget that and make that happen. And then even for salespeople, I think a lot of times salespeople just go and they're just on the hunt all the time and they're chasing all these options, but they're never stepping back and saying, what could I do that's smarter or better? What kind of training, coaching, what can I do different in my approach to just improve a little bit? Uh, as soon as you were talking, it reminded me of a book I read last year, which totally changed things in my mind, even though I'm not great at practicing it. Uh, and the book's called The Road Less Stupid by Keith J. Cunningham. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically, you know, his tagline is, it, is smart people do dumb things. So the goal is to just do less dumb things, not to be perfectly <laughs> smart, just make less mistakes. Um, and the biggest, biggest mantra I took from that was start less things, finish more things, right? Which is really tough because I want to start everything um, and then not finish them. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I think that's great. And again, same thing. I look at salespeople, individual cons contributors and say, what can you also take from this, right? How can you step back, do some thinking, be strategic instead of always just chasing, always on the hunt, always yeah. just, you know, doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so speaking of which goes into the next thing I want to talk about salespeople being desensitized, right? You said losing touch with the customer. I see that when somebody has been in sales for too long or they've drank too much of the company Kool-Aid and they think that the company is amazing and the service is amazing and everyone should want it. And who cares who you are? I'm just going to sell this to you or I have a quota and I'm on a rampage and it doesn't matter who's in my way and they lose that touch. It's the human connection you talked about in the first part. So where do you see that? And, and really also you had mentioned this too about customers, buyers, you know, they want that connection. If you're not going to give it to them, they're going to move on. And so what, how do you help people, salespeople, sellers get back to that if they can, or what's the over under in? Well, I think in that part, Jason, the first misconception is that there's some getting back to I would submit to you that there is a cultural issue in sales, and especially corporate sales. Like sellers don't, they, they're brought in the wrong way. They don't understand this stuff because they're never taught it, man. Like no one's teaching philosophy. When you get, when you're over, my, my kids at um, Georgia, I got two kids, one at Georgia State University, the other at UGA. If they, if AT&T shows up on their, their the campus and recruits them to come, you know, do sales for AT&T, and they're going to say, <laughs> AT&T recruiters are pretty good. You guys don't go work out there. But anyway, when they recruit them, when they show up to their training uh, after they've sold in the dream. They show up to their training and they're there for their week of training in Dallas or San Antonio, wherever they send them. They are never going to learn about really serving the customer. They're never going to learn about really connecting with the customer. They're, really, they're never going to learn about problem solving and solution selling and um, the importance of, of relationships. And so here's the reason why. Because it doesn't suit the company. It doesn't suit the company. It's a numbers game for companies, right? Like it's devious, but it's true. It's a numbers game for, for companies. They know how many sellers are going to roughly be successful over however amount of time. Their job is to maximize the impact that that seller has when they come in the door, right? And so they have to almost create a transactional environment. Um, and so the sellers are taught in a way to be able to get something out of them, right? So like, if you're only gonna be around six months, I'm gonna get something out of you, right? And so you do that by, by setting up KPIs and talking to them just about the products and services because they know a blind squirrel's gonna find a nut. But the, the long game for the sellers, and this is what I talk to sellers about, the long game is this relationship stuff, right? It's really understanding that, you know, sales is the ultimate like entrepreneur of the corporate world. Like you are the entrepreneurs and what you put into it, how you invest in your customer, how you create solutions is going to be to your benefit. So oftentimes, Jason, that's at odds with the company. It is. It's at odds. And, and I understand it. And, I, and I'm very open about it and telling sellers this. So if you're a seller, if you if you if you love this profession the way that Jason and I do, if you believe that it is one of the noblest professions as I do, everything has to be sold. 
at some point, then what you do is you will seek out practitioners like Jason and myself that can help educate you and help you to grow in the ways of the Jedi. I feel like a Jedi master right now. <laughs> that's perfect. I love it. No, that's perfect. Well, and what's interesting is that I've had this philosophy for a while. I first noticed it from the customer perspective and then worked it backwards, is that as a customer, if you pay close enough attention, you can see the corporate philosophy based on how the salesperson teaches you. Retail, in-person, oh, yeah. outreach, all of that stuff, right? Because they were they were raised a certain way. Yep. Uh, and what you're saying is fascinating to hear that an AT&T plays it as a numbers game and then produces reps who play it as a numbers game, not a relationship game. And they're all about the numbers, which then is why it feels like it as a customer. You're like, you literally do not care about me. Uh, and, and they don't be, and it's not their fault. It's that that's not how they were raised. So last question, because otherwise we'll break our 13 minutes for this episode. <laughs> um, see if we can get this done. One of the things you had submitted to me when we, uh, when I was setting this up and kind of the questions was, you know, what has surprised you most about building your current team or any past team? And your response at first, I was like, what? Did he just say that? You're like, nothing surprises me. And the fact that you asked this question is surprising because nothing surprises me or something along those lines. And, and it's true because if you do something long enough, nothing surprises you or it doesn't feel like a surprise because you know that you can handle that. What do you say for sellers to get them to that level? Like what's the one big piece of advice so that sellers don't get surprised by anything? Like how did you get to that point like where you've got now? Well, I'll tell you the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm there is because very, a long time ago, I just start, I started accepting people for what, who and what they were. I, I'm very, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a rare occasion that someone surprises me because my goal from the moment I first meet someone is to find out who they are, who they really are, like what makes them tick, like why do they do what they do, what is their, what are their motivations and things like that. And so once I understand that, then it's, uh, again, I'm very seldom surprised by people that, that are on my team. And I also, and I said this in, in, in our and the first part, um, I trust people to do what's in their best interest. I trust people to do what's in their best interest. And sometimes we get in our heads, we get into our emotions, we get into how we think about certain things and that, that impacts the way that we view others and, uh, and, and, and what we think should matter to them and, and then they disappoint us. <laughs> Right? Like, mm -hmm. whose fault is that? Is that's, that us or them? So, well, that's on us, right? Because you have this expectation of someone that they didn't set, that you made up in your head based on your own filter and lenses in the world. And I've seen that as the bane of existence of so many leaders and business yeah. owners who expect their salespeople in particular to do something. And again, it comes down to what's in the best interest of that human. They're going to do what's in their best interest. Hopefully it aligns with your business. If not, be mm -hmm. ready. Uh, don't be surprised, but be ready. So let's end it there. Let's stay on time. Ronell, you're the man. I appreciate you. Thanks for sharing all this. Again, for people who want to find you, it'll be in the show notes. Uh, but ronellrichards.com, also Ronell Richards on LinkedIn is a good place to start. Obviously, lots of brands. I'm sure if people Google you, uh, the business in bourbon. Uh, and then please, depending on what you listen to, make sure to check out his book coming out in November 2022, Shut the Hell Up and Sell. Mr. Ronell, thanks for being here on Jason, the show. Jason, you're the man. Man, thank you, brother. Appreciate the invite. It was a blast and I uh, can't wait to chop it up in person. That, that would be great. I would look forward to that. I can't wait to, uh, to meet up now that, uh, you know, that's happening more and more. Everyone listening and watching, please make sure to check out part one. So much fire in that uh, that Ronell was sharing, especially in what he's learned and, and where he's gotten here. So make sure to check out that podcast, YouTube, uh, and that conversation. The rest of it will be in the show notes here. Until next time, keep selling with Authentic Persuasion. <laughs>